to remember Allah is just say Allah, 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 Allah. That's all they say. They don't remember Allah in their good times. Mostly. They remember Allah in the bad times only to complain to Allah. The zikr is just illusion and delusion, not their Allah. And the astaghfirullah requires another astaghfirullah on top of that because it's done in heedlessness. Man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us intelligence. Where there is intelligence, there is faith. Yes? Where there is faith, there is modesty. Akal. Doesn't mean intelligence as in figuring out one plus one equals two. Or this is the sun, this is the moon, this is the earth. It's not that kind of intelligence. The kind of akal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about is that one plus one equals two. There is Allah there. There is a sun, there is Allah. There also the creator of the sun, the earth, creator of the earth, the skies, creator of the skies. Everything that your mind can produce, it's saying there is Allah there. La ilaha illallah. If you figure out the whole world from top to bottom, but you are not understanding your Lord, not the Lord knowing your Lord, you're not understanding, you're still the most stupid person, stupid creature, ignorant one. Because the one who is ignorant of his Lord <coughs> is the worst creature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with that knowledge of Him in us already. It's not something that you have to discover new. You only have to take out what is covering it. Before we're sent into this world, be quiet a little bit. You see? People are not even knowing how to keep themselves tight when knowing that something is coming. Ah, peace? There's no peace because your peace only comes with this is what people understand. Peace means if I get enough to eat what I like to eat, if I get enough sleep what I want to sleep, what I want to wear, everything in the dunya perfect, that is peace. This is what it means. This is what you mean too. What I want, I want this, 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 this. If I get them, I'm at peace. What kind of foolishness is this? Which prophet is teaching us that? Which prophet is practicing that? Which prophet is asking anything for themselves? Their peace is coming with what? With pleasing their Lord. That means you're not doing anything to please your Lord. You're only doing things to please yourself. That's all. You're not doing it to know this is like this. It pleases my Lord. Oh, my Lord is pleased with me. I'm pleased with my Lord. That time, your nafs becomes nafs mutmain. The one who is pleased with his Lord and the Lord is pleased with him. It doesn't matter what you are suffering inside or outside. You are pleased with your Lord and your Lord is pleased with you. That is the level of every prophet. Every awliya, they are like that. It doesn't matter. World defines what happiness is or what is not happiness. It doesn't matter. They know that their Lord is pleased with them. These days, everyone just wants to please themselves. You're not getting any peace, yes, because your peace, you're still looking at how to serve yourself, how to make yourself to feel good, to feel pleasure, to get what you want. Only then you'll be at peace. Who is saying this? That means you don't have any real, uh, how we say, a mission, a niyat, an intention. You have no real goal. If your goal is saying, my goal is to please Allah today. Let me see. I did this. This is pleasing to Allah. I did this. This is pleasing to Allah. Not to say, you did this and you're a saint. You did this, you're a holy person. But to do this, this is pleasing to Allah. Alhamdulillah. That my Lord did not give me long leash today for me to do this, 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 and this wrong things. I eat today. I have heat today. 
I can go, astaghfirullah, to the bathroom today. Are you thinking about this? No, you're not. Eating and drinking, that's what you're thinking of all the time. And because you cannot get that, that's why you don't have peace. Saying, I'm making zikr all the time and I don't have peace in my heart. You're not making zikr. No. When your aim is to please your Lord and you have then a guide, a shaykh, and you have a mission, and you have a goal, this is what you need to do today, this week, this month, this year. You have all of that because everything is aligned. Your will now, it is aligned with the will of your shaykh, with your prophet, with Allah. That time, you see your Lord is happy, you are happy. You see your shaykh is happy, you are happy. You're doing the work then. If you're disconnected, you're never you're going to find. So many of you, you're disconnected because you're just here for your own selfish needs, that's all. You're not looking to see what Allah is looking, what your Prophet, what, what is, you're not. You're disconnected. You're here, but you're disconnected. Because can you imagine any Sahabi Kiram that they're disconnected from their Prophet? They're not concerned what their Prophet is doing. They're not in the Prophet's mission. When there is something to be struggling, they're not struggling. They're just sitting back. And they say, ah, you and your Lord go and fight. No, exactly. That is not the behavior of the Ummah. That is not behavior of the companions. It's not behavior of a murid. There's a behavior of Bani Israel disobedient ones. He says there are so many. Look at yourself, are you? Do you even know what is happening in your Shaykh's life? What he is doing? What he's aiming for? Are you in that? No, you're not. You want me to go more? They never find peace. And your peace is just, uh, if I get the best of this dunya, and I get the best of the ahirat. And your definition of best of dunya is what the kafirs are saying, unbelievers are saying. And the best of the ahirat, only what the Wahhabis they are saying. The best of this dunya is knowing you have pleased your Lord, and you're doing the work that your Lord wants you to do to bring Haq back into this world. Our mission is big. But you're not putting your life in the mission. You're still complaining and struggling and going back and forth and being very busy in your uh, little problems, little lives. We are here. Should not be. That's why you're finding, ah, I'm not finding any satisfaction to there is no satisfaction. The poorest Sahabi, the Ahli Sufa who had nothing, they had the biggest satisfaction knowing they're in the presence of their Prophet. So many of us were in the presence of our Shaykh. You're not happy. And what does it take for your Shaykh to go? Maybe you're going to be happy. It happened to us. Are you sitting back to think, to make tafakkur and saying, okay, during my shaykh's time, what did I do? How was I useful? Really? Okay, I love my shaykh, I was sitting there, I was listening to him, I was happy. But what did you do? How useful are you in the way of Allah? If you say, I was and I did my job, okay, I have nothing to say to you. But if you say, I didn't do too much, there is now. Another opportunity. What are you doing now? What are you doing? What have you achieved? Uh, let's say dunya and ahirat. What have you achieved? If your dunya and ahirat, they are together, you will achieve dunya, you will achieve ahirat too. But it's not. That means you're disconnected. That means there are certain things we say, it's not good for you to do. You're doing, you're being busy with. Huh? And there are things that we say, be busy with doing it. I'm not going to be busy with that. I'm going to do something else. That time you've already been disconnected. Not later, not five, seven, eight years later. That time you've disconnected. Because you never make the real connection to the shaykh. What is that connection to the shaykh? I feel good. I feel him strong. His presence is strong in me. What, what does that mean? Huh? 
Where? If a believer feels the pain of another believer, even if they're not together, isn't that what Prophet says to be? Then what about you and your connection to your shaykh? So, we should just try to be good, that's all. Don't be too selfish. Don't be too spoiled. Say your prayers. Make your zikr. Don't make too much problems to each other. Oh, we'll be happy. But that time, don't expect too much too. We've just done the very basic. That is what the basic. That is not basic for a murid. That's basic to become a human being. To be a murid, oh. That's why you're not making too much. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, Allah, Ya Rabbi, your pleasure is my goal, is my meaning, is my maqsud. Your pleasure, your happiness. What are we doing to make them to be happy, to make our shaykh to be happy? What are you doing? Really? So, we should look. Then that time, you will know how much that you are doing, how much hizmet you are doing how much you're carrying, how much responsibility you're carrying. And the person's honor, meaning more peace, more honor comes more peace. More peace comes more satisfaction. Your honor is according to responsibility. If you say, I'm only responsible to myself, eating and drinking, that much honor you have. That much responsibility you have. Don't expect too much. You're worse than a kid at that time. Because at least a child is masum. A child is innocent, a child is completely angelic in that world, is giving something when you're next to it. What are you? What are we? We already passed, oh, oh, long time ago. So this is your connection. Not just to say, I feel strong, I do this. Yeah, you're not even feeling anything, what he's feeling. You saying we're oasis? Or that the Oasis al Karani took out all his teeth when the Prophet lost two? Huh? How connected are we to the Shaykh to know? When you say that we are. Hmm. So we should wake up a little bit. You understand? This is impossible to do? No, it's not. Everybody has fallen in love before. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Their pain is your pain. Their happiness is your happiness. Her happiness is your happiness. His happiness, uh, the kid's happiness is your happiness. The sadness is your, even if you are completely not together, to know something happened and it's very sad or something happened, <gasps> immediately is going to affect you. Oh, that time, check your connection to your shaykh. There's nothing there. And it's only social uh, activity, which, not bad. But don't expect too much then that time. Enough. I don't want to talk about love anymore. People are not even concerned. <laughs> because like I said, we've been corrupted in the system so much. We're not concerned. You know really what makes a person to be concerned? When the person has gone through pain. When you see someone else going through the pain, he says, oh, I've, I've experienced that before. You have that pain, I have the same pain. You know what, this helps me, this doesn't help me. We haven't gone through anything. And you don't, we're not raised with, uh, we've been raised with anything that we want, Anything that we desire is given to us. Because we don't have concern, so it messes up with our mental development. And it makes you to feel very uneasy. Because if everything is there,
Why am I not feeling this satisfaction and happiness? Because this is unnatural when I see someone hurting and it doesn't affect me. Especially as believers. It's supposed to be one body. But there's no concern. Why is that? Because the emphasis is not on taking care for each other. The emphasis is not on putting others before yourself. The emphasis is me, myself first. I have to take care of myself first. Individualism. Oh, Allah forbid if I have to sacrifice my comfort for other people. Allah forbid if I have to share my happiness with others. You only share when there is surplus. It's not sharing. It's not sharing. You share when you have something good and you feel bad you're the only one having it. That is not right. Don't nod your head there. Don't nod your head. You're one of the most selfish person I know. You understand everything only here. But when it comes to doing something, you're the most selfish person I know. Most spoiled and the most lazy person that I know. How a person can be uh, generous if he's lazy? So don't listen and then nod your head like you really understand. Maybe you understand theoretically. We're not here for theory. That is hypocrisy. Hmm? Yeah, you don't have peace because you're only taking care of yourself. If you take care of other people, you'll find peace. Even if you're horrible, you'll find peace because you see peace that you're giving to other people. You're helping other people, they find a little bit of peace. You help them in their pain so much and you took, Allah is using you one way or another to help them to remove a little bit of their hurt, remove a little bit of their want, something. You're helping others. You're concerned. Then Allah will take away your pain too. You're busy with others, you're not busy with yourself. Oh, in this society, the teachers, be busy with yourself, don't be busy with others. Don't help other people. So, you can say how many billion times Allah that time, you will not get it. Because Allah is not a word. Allah is not a word. Allah is not Alif Lam Lamha. It's not Allah. Allah is coming. What he wants is coming through his prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And his prophet came 1400 years ago and he has taught us and our sheikhs are teaching us still what is Allah. You're not concerned. You're not looking out. You're not helping. You're only busy with yourself. You can say a billion times Allah. You'll never have. Your heart is going to be satisfied. Because in reality, you're saying, me, me. Anna. Not Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So, they take us captive in this way, in this upbringing. You don't have time, you don't have money, you cannot do anything, just save yourself. Not like that. You understand? Yeah. Help others. You'll find some peace because helping others is what Allah is doing. Istaghfirullah. Wa min Allahu tafiq al-fatihah.